Yeah, people. You know what time it is again? Another year. Another iPhone. Back again, people. And yeah, this could be bigger than you think. Now, a lot of people may be saying, you know, this thing is the same, nothing has really changed, but we'll see. I mean, that's my job here for you, make you know if it's worth it or not. And that's why I actually try to upgrade every single year ever since I started with 13 Pro Max. And this is no different. So let's just jump straight into it. This is a full live unboxing here. So here we go. First seal off. Second seal off. And this box is actually a bit smaller. I think they said it's about, you know, a few percentage smaller. Like, oh. All right, guys. I went with the flagship color and I was not ready for this. This is the flagship color for the year, the Desert Titanium. And pictures don't do this any justice. Now, in the Apple store, I actually looked at all the other colors except for this one because I wanted to surprise myself and I was not ready. The white looks super clean. The black looks super sleek. The titanium, natural or natural titanium looked super industrial clean though but this is beautiful there's something about this it's not quite i'm not sure if you're seeing it properly here the lights hope you are it's not quite gold it's not quite sandy either it's kind of in between it has this iridescent thing with the back glass going on there pretty sick i love this it's pretty cool. Look at the camera lenses right there and trying to get it so that it doesn't get too much glare from the, the light. But yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's pretty beautiful, yo. Alright, so the standout features, enough about that nerding out right there. But the standout feature for this is this new camera control button. Yeah, it's a button. It's a flipping button. It's a button. You can hear it clicking and see it clicking you definitely can hear it clicking yeah it's definitely a button and i'm a bit disappointed they didn't go the other route which is the capacitive force touch or whatever they used to call it back at the 8 and 7 series iphones but it's pretty cool i actually cheated a bit this is supposed to be a first time impression also but you know i had a little issue with my sim card being transported over and i played around with the display models there for a bit and yeah this thing is legit a lot of reviewers saying that it was you know sort of gimmicky but you know i like it i love it i'm going to be using this a lot going forward but you guys will soon see what i mean later on in the video but before i continue let's see what else and it's pretty much this is all you get <laughs> nowadays the cable usb c to usb c of course braided very nice cable and a sim ejector tool because yet again i'm in canada and they give you the sim card tray still so that's still a plus because my issue was porting over my eSIM, which i don't know the guy forgot to port it over and it yeah <laughs> but it's fixed when i start up the phone it should be sent straight to the phone and everything and i mean that's about it really there's nothing else really to write home about here just a very 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 slim down set of manual papers here don't need that that's about it that's the iphone 16 pro max unboxing slim but hopefully all the fat is in here so I'm going to set this bad girl up and you know Play around with it for a bit, give my full rundown, my full on impressions, especially on this notable thing here. I mean, that's it. See you after this transition. And we're back. And yeah, finished setting up the phone, did the whole thing. It was actually faster than before 
Always make sure that you back up to iCloud people. One of the things you must make sure to do before trading up or getting a new iPhone if you already owned an iPhone before. Makes the thing a whole <laughs> less painful, a whole lot less painful people. Yeah, so it was pretty quick and painless. And getting right into it, did a few tests and this thing really and truly is, you know, for better or for worse, an air of familiarity and a bit of a evolutionary step now at the beginning of this video i said this whole thing may be bigger than you may think um these are my personal first time impressions i'm not being influenced by the other youtubers or other people talking about this thing and here's the thing right off the bat without wasting your time if you have a 15 pro max save your money don't upgrade I did this yet again for you guys so that you don't or you do have to forget what i mean take it from me if you have a 15 pro max it's not worth it the only notable change is the camera control button that's about it people this button and it is it's bigger than i thought it would have been i mean listening to a lot of other you know content creators out there they say a lot of negative things they say that it is an unnecessary you know addition i don't think so i mean these things always start as you know not seeming like they're worth their weight in salt just that the action button but the action button as you saw as you heard came into its own it has its own uses and i think the camera control button is going to be even more powerful as time goes on Yet again, as I said, as time goes on. In its current state, I have a couple of things to say about it. It's in a weird spot. It's not too high, not too low, but at the same time, not high or low enough. In horizontal mode here, as you see me holding it, it's a bit high up. Now, with it not being in a case, it's a bit rough. It's hard to find it really. It's a bit out of the way and because it's flush with the body of the phone, I think they should have made it a bit more recessed. You know, you sort of have to feel for it. And it's not quite in a natural resting position. And yet again, I don't have the biggest hands in the world being a man and all. But, you know, you have to reach up here for it. And when you do find it, I mean, you double click it. Well, I set mine to double click. You can set it to single click or double click as you can see here. You can also set it to multiple different functions, not just a camera funny enough. You can at the current time set it to scan QR codes and some other couple other things. But you don't know Apple's gonna have further plans for that in the future. Who knows, they may even open it up to the shortcuts app just like the action button because a lot of people complain that the action button is in a funny spot as well, that it's too high. Here may be a better spot. I mean, you can reach for it easily with your thumb. So that's one thing to note. Yet again, the future prospects of this thing could be very powerful. Um, using the camera control button though, it's very intuitive. And you know what? Forget what I was about to say. Let me continue. Yeah, it's, it's using the phone naked is a bit awkward. And that's the thing. A lot of these other content creators use a phone naked, of course, to show it off or whatever. But coming into its own, really and truly, you want to use a case on it. So here I have this case here, the hybrid case here from ESR. I'm going to do a full review. We can check that out in the next video. Awesome case. Check out that video. And yeah, using a case on it really and truly brings it more into its own. Now, the thing is, with a case such as this one, it has a nice recessed area here, perfect for your finger, and especially your thumb. And using it in portrait mode, it feels perfect. Like, my thumb is literally just resting right here naturally. And, you know, most people film on Instagram and TikTok these days, so portrait mode most times is a move for people. And from the phone being off here, you simply double-click it, and it brings you right into the camera app. You know, with my finger resting naturally here, you can do two soft clicks 
here to get into the menu. Yet again, you can set this thing to single click to access the camera that's set by default. And you just simply scroll through, you pick what you want, your exposure, your depth, your zoom, your cameras, your styles, your tone. Now it does take some getting used to and it requires some level of muscle memory. I mean, I'm getting used to it, but you know, it's cool. It's set to zoom by default, but you can change it to any one of these as you may desire. I would more or less set it to cameras because I don't personally like, you know, to zoom. You can easily switch between each camera here at will. You know, you can double click to select whatever you want to select. Double click again to go into the menu. These are half pressed, so they're gentle touches. And as I said, it just takes some getting used to. Now you select your camera here. You single press to take a picture. You long press to take a video. It's very intuitive and I'm doing all of this with one finger and that's what this is all about. Capturing everything in the moment. Now let's just show you what I'm talking about. You lock the phone. Yet again, you can single click or double click. Set mine to double click so that I don't accidentally press it. But I'm double clicking straight into the camera. Do that. Choose my camera lens. Take my picture or film instantly. Right? And that's what this is all about adding to the experience. Normally you have two ways to access a camera. You either hold down the camera button here. Now with iOS 18, you can change that to anything that you want. So you're not just, you don't have to restrict yourself to having the camera here, especially with this, the camera control button now, if you have the 16 series of phones. But however, you can do here, get into your camera and you know, it's a two-handed process or it can even be one-handed. Let me try that. Let's try it. Let's balance the skills here, right? Let's balance the skills. So, one-handed into your camera. You select your lens. You press your photo. You hold down. Record a video. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, that's it. Um, it does make it a bit redundant in that retrospect there. But it does give you options right but i'm not bullshitting you here people i'm live here on camera i like this button I mean it's not a game changer yet but give it some time let's see how it pans out but i'm sticking to my guns with what i said before if you have the 15 which yet again i just proved with the camera up here you can pretty much do the same blasted thing one-handed or two-handed and you get access to more options here you know using a single thing even though you can then once you access the app with the button here you actually can access everything else it's the same thing people like I'm, I'm going in circles here it's the same blasted thing yeah the true meat with this button is yet to be seen however i like it i like using it it's intuitive I don't need to look at the screen when I'm doing anything really aside from selecting stuff because of this tactile button here. And yeah, for content creators, it will be useful. However, for the average Joe, not so much, at least not as yet. Let's see what they do with it in the future. But do not buy a piece of tech for what is promised, but for what it is today. And in its current state, if you're not a content creator and you already have an iPhone 15 Pro Max, negative people. However, if you have an older phone, I'll address this or I have addressed it depending on when the video comes out. My video about my one year review for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it holds true and holds the same. Whereas if you have an older phone from the 14 series back, this is a worthy upgrade. Just like the 15 Pro Max is a worthy upgrade upgrade if you're coming from the 14 and back yes the 15 series represents a paradigm shift this usb-c port here opens up a whole new world the camera changes further refined here and one thing that i actually forgot to mention the mics on this thing the studio mic thing is legit like check out this sample here that i just did and see and hear for yourself um, just a little note though, I use a selfie camera, not the best camera on the phone, of course, but just to show you how much sound really and truly does define and improve 
your content. Sound is king, people. Sound is king. You can film on a potato and sound like friggin' Obama and it takes your content from here to way up here. Sound is king, people. And video is second. So check out the sample for yourself and let me know in the comments what you think. I'm blown away from what I heard, people. And I know you will too. Alright, people. So I'm actually using the camera control button here, one-handed, to film this thing here. I'm actually filming my fridge and you can hear the loud noise in the background i'm actually planning to test out these new studio mics you actually hear you know how it actually gets rid of that noise and you only should be hearing and focusing on my voice only so let's see how that works out but yeah getting back to this thing so the camera control button is a thing and it will be a thing for generations to come Let's see what Apple does with it. I'm not going to demonize it or chastise it. I actually appreciate them trying new things. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of thing because a lot of people complain, Oh, Apple don't try nothing new. You know, same old, same old, every blasted year is the same thing. Come on. They try something new, people still are complain. And Android fanboys whine even more. I don't know, I don't get it. This whole Apple versus Android war. Use what you like, people. Use what works best for you and enjoy your technology, people. The war is unnecessary. But I'm glad that they tried something new. Let's see the direction that they take this thing into. The studio mics are a definite game changer. If you're a content creator, that is for sure. All the other fine tuning with the cameras, you know, the wide angle lens is now 48 megapixels, which brings it on par with the standard lens which has been 48 megapixel since the 14 pro max it has been refined it's even better now the 24 megapixel pictures which have become standard since the 15 series are now even smaller in a more widely accessible and usable format you get better macro shots of course with the improved wide angle lens because that's what is used to take the macro shots of course 4k 120 fps or 1080p 240 fps with with and this is a big asterisk with hdr and dolby vision that sets it apart from the s24 ultra yes i went there and all the other flagship phones your images are your picture quality for your videos are pretty much on par with what you see filming in 30 60 24 fps it looks natural no graininess no flakiness no jagged edges no artifacting it looks natural so you're actually getting a true cinematic experience with it they took a while to get there the s24 ultra had it i think the s23 had it or whatever but it was never done this good and i went there people it is what it is i call out strengths and weaknesses Aside from that, this thing is the same as the 15 Pro Max. So, yeah. Regardless if you get the 15, which I highly advise, you get the 15 Pro Max. If you're coming from an older phone, if you already have one, keep it. Now it's the best time to upgrade if you have something older than the 15 Pro Max because they're on sale. I traded in mine for this. And, yeah, enjoy it. If you did decide to upgrade to the 16 Pro Max, whether you're a content creator, you have a hole burning in your pocket, or you just love being on the bleeding edge of technology, no judgments, people. It's a bang of a phone, a very good phone. It's slightly bigger. The screen has increased by, what, 0.2 inches or so? I really don't notice the difference. The bezels are smaller, like very small. Especially with a case on, you barely even see it. It's like the phone screen melts from the case right into it. You have to look closely to see those black edges right there. But, I mean, those are social changes more or less. It's more or less a refinement upgrade, an incremental upgrade this year. But it's still an awesome phone. The battery life, I'll have to give my word, my verdict on that in future videos. Yet again, I'm going to be making update a month from now three months from now six months from now but definitely a year from now i'm gonna get 18 people 
<laughs> it's the one piece of tech i will be upgrading into the foreseeable future for this channel so you guys know 100 percent what is up and this is more of a layman's perspective a everyday user everyday consumer perspective <laughs> yeah babe just called to check in but yeah i'm giving an everyday consumer perspective on this thing not so much so heavy on the tech specs i mean there's tons of videos out there going down that road but really and truly at the end of the day it's all about how you integrate this thing into your life does it improve it or it doesn't and yeah guys so far i love this phone yet again if i was not a content creator i wouldn't see the need to upgrade this camera control button is the most notable aesthetic and ergonomic change but we have yet to see its true potential a lot is to come people i mean i definitely am going to do a video an update video on the most notable feature that they keep singing about for this thing apple intelligence this thing launched without it which yet again makes it no different from the 15 pro max aside from that button but even the 15 pro max will be getting that as well so i have no clue at this point in time what the main advantage of this thing really is at this point but you guys will definitely know from me get my perspective i'll let you guys know if anything has changed what will change and how this thing evolves over the next year so that's it people thanks for tuning in yet again check out my follow-up videos my iphone 15 pro max video update one year final verdict review which may come before or after this video and of course my recommended case which is this one from esr their hybrid case with this stash stand here very awesome i am not let me repeat this i am not sponsored by esr this is just me every year is either taurus or esr right now last year was taurus giving esr a run so far i'm impressed they never let me down that's just that and i'll also be speaking about this which is the screen protector which i intend to put on the grill right after this video and of course i'll be doing a review on it also an installation video also it's also from esr they never miss people and i'm interested with this thing because it actually has this fancy probably overkill installation thing here i want to see what the hell is up with this it should make it foolproof let's see how it stacks up compared to what the brand is claiming yeah y'all all saw that mkbhd video when he did it blindfolded but let's see how esr stands up they usually never miss so check out that video as well comes up shortly after this one so thanks again for tuning in people you don't know i'd appreciate a like subscribe and of course hitting that little notification bell so you know when the next video is out thank you guys see you again in the next one Peace out and take care.